Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Billy. Today I would like to share with you a very belated uh, Valentine's Day dress uh, that is made from two and a half yards of cotton wool uh, that I purchased from moofabrics.com. And this is Moo's own proprietary line uh, that is made in Spain and that I purchased it uh, last summer when Moon had a lot of uh, fabrics on sale. And uh, so this dress is made from a bodice that is modified from uh, my monster shirt um, that I talked about in my last video, video number 48. And the skirt that I used uh, for this dress, uh, if you have been watching my channel for a while, you can recognize it right away, is the view A from the new look 6843 uh, quarter circle skirt. And I also added uh, inseam pockets uh, for this Valentine's Day dress. So the reason for uh, the delay for this Valentine's Day dress uh, was that I caught a bug right after my last video and I was out of commission for two weeks. And uh, sorry to disappoint, but it was not COVID. But anyway, so I was just really behind in both my work and sewing. And so this is what this dress looked like on Valentine's Day. So clearly uh, not even close to being ready at all. Uh, but anyway, because it so happened that the dress was hanging like this for a few days. So it gave me a really good idea of what this dress will look like um, if I were to make it into a sleeveless dress. And I actually really quite like it. So I do think I would definitely make a version of uh, the stress in a sleeveless version when the weather uh, is much warmer and much more conducive to wearing something that is sleeveless. So now let's talk about the constructions uh, for this dress and how I modified uh, various pattern pieces to get to this one. So uh, my monster shirt obviously is a it's, even though it's relatively fitted as a shirt, it clearly is obviously much wider than a bodice for a dress. And so to modify my monster shirts into this bodice for the skirt, I just um, amalgamated my monster shirts bodice with my very basic uh, tried and tested uh, dress bodice that I have been using for so many dresses. And so what I did was just lined up the two uh, front bodice um, uh, at the sewing line. So, so eliminating all uh, seam allowance. So I lined them up, you know, one right on top of the other at the, the sewing line for the center front. And then for this one, I knew I wanted the neckline, the shoulder, and also the armhole to be from my monster shirt. So that's what I did. I just traced it out, you know, this way. But starting from under the armhole uh, all the way to the waist seam, it is the, I just follow, I traced out the pattern piece for my basic dress bodice. And also because the my monster shirt obviously is a bit wider um, than my basic bodice uh, for my dress. So also, I also narrowed everything down. Uh, so then the width is the same as the, the my basic dress bodice and then also uh the dart also the my monster shirt only has uh my modified version a uh, version two that is the black uh, viscose version because the original shirt does not have uh, bust darts and so i uh i made sure the bust darts and also the waist darts of this new dress pattern would equal the total size of the dart sizes from my basic dress bodice. So that's how I uh, modify uh, or amalgamated uh, the two bodice patterns into this uh, one for this dress. And the sleeves for this dress, I use the standard three quarter uh, lens um, gather sleeves from the website uh, from uh, my monster uh, dress your body uh, dot fr and from the Baja Mosh area and um, and so exactly like the black viscose version of the my monster shirt 
but for this one I made a few uh, modifications. Uh, number one here, um, I I wanted to have a little puff at this like right here. Uh, so it's a very subtle puff but not too much. So what I did uh, was, I, um, as you can see from the picture here, I, uh, I added about a half an inch of height at the very top of the sleeve head. And then, um, and I just graded you know, from notch to notch. And so that just gives me a very sort of subtle uh, puff without you know too much. And I definitely do need to uh, use gathering stitches when I insert the sleeves. And uh, for and for the sleeves themselves, um, I added about one and a half inches in length just to give me a bit longer length. And then for the cuff here, I used the white cuff. Uh, uh, cuff piece from the three quarter sleeve lines from my monster shirt and then uh, but instead of the original cuff you know being a white cuff you just fold over and then that is your cuff but what I did was I cut the pattern piece uh, lengthwise into two and that gives me a seam to uh, to allow me to insert the ruffles here and for the ruffles, I used the ruffle uh, pattern piece for the neckline. Uh, and then I, it's a simple, very narrow rectangle piece. And then I adjusted the lens to achieve the desired uh, ruffly effect. And so for this look, uh, which I think is um, just about right uh, for my preference, uh, the piece for the ruffles is 1.8 times the length of the uh, the cuff pattern piece, and of course you can adjust it uh, to have more rough, to have be more roughly, and they would just increase the length of the pattern piece. Or if you want a little less roughly, you would just uh, reduce the length, so it would not have as much gather. And uh, so, so this is what it looks like. And also to give it just a little puff here, I also fanned out the pattern piece ever so, well actually not so slightly, I fanned it out by two inches total. And so instead of more straight down from the original three quarter sleeve, it has a little puff but not too much. Uh, so, so that's what it looks like. For the front ruffle piece, um, which is also a narrow rectangle uh, pattern piece, I increased the pattern length by about 20% uh, to make the ruffles more roughly, <laughs> and so more of a 3D effect. And then, uh, so I'm very happy about the look. And also, just like version two, um, the black viscose shirt, I also cut out two pieces. Um, so then I will be able to have, you know, of the good side of the fabric uh, on both the top and the bottom of the ruffle piece, the ruffle piece. So then, you know, so it, it looks really clean and really nicely finished. And then my Actually, um, I made a little more work for myself. So I could have just simply cut out a wider piece, you know, instead of two pieces and then have to uh, sew it over. So if I just cut out a, a piece that is double the width of this pattern piece, I can simply fold it over and then gather and then insert it. And so it would be uh, less work. So I do think I will remember to do that uh, in the future. And also the same thing with the ruffles. Uh, this is the exactly the original lens that comes with the um, the pattern. And my mistake here was I actually ironed um, the ruffles, and so the the ironing really flattened flattened out the ruffles. So instead of a three D effect, the ruffles for the neckline maybe only have two point three Ds now. Um, but it's okay, you know, eventually it will loosen up anyway, so so that is fine. I lined this dress uh, with a rayon lawn that I purchased from fabric.com. And uh, even though this rayon lawn is very soft, in hindsight, rayon is not the best uh, choice for lining. Um, because rayon tends to stretch. 
So even after hanging it up for a few days before I connected the lining to the exterior fabric, the bodice by the time already stretched by about one inch and the skirt portion stretched by about one and a quarter inch. And so what I did was uh, I actually had to unpick the waist seam of the lining and then uh, shorten the bodice by one inch and then re -sew the whole thing. So then the lining at the waist would still match um, the waist seam of the exterior um, fabric. And so, so, I mean, that's a little extra work, but that's fine. But just so that I will share it with you um, because it's in a way a bit of a first version. So I did not want to use silk. Um, so, but that's fine. You know what? In the future, I will remember that I need to shorten it by one inch if I decide to um, use rayon long uh, for lining. And here are some pictures of the lining of this dress. And as you can see, the lining uh, naturally does not have the ruffles. And, uh, but turns out it's incredibly t easy to turn this uh, bodice into a plain uh, bodice for both the front and the back. So what I did was I just uh, lay overlapped the front yoke piece and the front bodice piece uh, at the sewing line. So what I did was just drew the sewing line on the two pieces and in this case um, at one centimeter from the edge of the pattern because that is the seam allowance for the monster shirt. And then I just overlap the two pieces at the sewing line and as you can see here I you know this gives you a clean uh, or plain front and so I just retrace it and that gives me the plain front. And I also did the same thing for the back. And, and because this uh, pattern, the monst my monster shirt, this come with a, a, a free shirt collar. And also you can download for free the shirt sleeves. Now, not all of a sudden, you just, you know, have a, you just get yourself a free uh, shirt pattern that already fits you so i think that is great and also obviously because it's the same neckline and also the same armhole your new shirt uh pattern piece will also fit all these other options uh for uh, the collar and also the sleeve so that is such a great thing uh for this pattern one thing i really like about this uh my monster shirt pattern um, is that it taught me two new skills. Uh, number one is the collar stand. You know, uh, here as you can see this is the collar stand. And so for a long time, I just felt intimidated uh, by the collar stand, even though I really wanted to make a uh, sort of like a crisp white cotton shirt. And but you know, so I tried it for this with this pattern and really it's not difficult at all. I mean, the instructions are very clear. And so I just follow the instructions with no issue whatsoever. And the second new skill that I learned is that this, my monster shirt that I did mention last time has a lapped cuff. And so, uh, so it's actually a real, you know, cuff that you can open like this. And, uh, traditionally, um, uh, for a long time, I also was really intimidated by it, but really the instructions are really clear. And uh, so I just follow it with no issue. And so generally you would finish the slit, you know, like here um, with a bias binding um, to finish the edge. But because this dress is lined, and so I wanted to see whether it was possible for me to uh, finish the slit here uh, by sewing the outer fabric and the lining together without using the bias binding. And I am very happy to report that it is totally doable. And so what I did here, uh, as you can see from the picture here, is basically I just sewed up the outside and also the, the lining uh, separately. But I only sewed up about, for the underarm seam here for the sleeve, I only sewed about one third of it. And so the rest of it is left open. And this one third is just to allow me to be able to attach the sleeve uh, to the bodice. 
and then I inserted the the lining to the dress wrong sides together so I just kind of inserted it in. and then uh, similar to how I lined a um, a dress with a uh, zipper in the center bag uh, that I talked about in my video 27 I basically uh, folded the, the right side uh, because you know originally when I first inserted the sleeves the fabrics are wrong size together uh, but to uh, sew the slit they need to be right size together so basically I just fold the exterior fabric inward and then the lining outward and then I pin it and then I pulled out the uh, the lining and I just sew you know how this is slit and they just sew around the slit and then clip a bit of the edge to make sure that it would lie flat uh, lay flat and then I understitched uh, the lining portion as you can see from this um, picture here and then so then once I did the the stitching for the slit then I sewed up the sleeves for the exterior fabric and the lining and so now this is what it looks like uh, so here you can see it's really clean and so with no bulk whatsoever from the bias binding so I'm really happy about the uh, the finish of this area here after this dress was all done and I tried it on uh, even though I tried it on uh, you know throughout the construction process but then because I didn't insert the buttons until the very last so that was when I, the stress was all done it was when the first time I was trying it on as a final sort of measurement uh, and so I was really surprised after I tried it on that there were very significant drag lines going down this way and then the drag down going down this way means that uh, I need to increase the bust star size so I can lift up the fabric so so this portion was would be horizontal instead of you know this drag line going down in this direction and um, I am an A cup person on a good day you know for my uh, my chest and so I was like what kind of upside down world is this that I actually needed to increase the bust star size but of course you know what we do not argue with the fabric um, so whatever the fabric wants is whatever the fabric uh, gets and so I just you know played around to see what how much I need to pinch in so then the drag line would disappear and turned out I need to increase the dart size by two centimeters total and that is almost one cup size bigger uh, but you know what it is what it is so I uh, so I made that change however because a two centimeter uh, increase is bigger than my standard 5 eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. That means that, you know, by the time I added this dart, in, enlarged the dart, there was just not enough fabric at the waist seam uh, for the bodice to connect to the skirt. And so what I needed to do was I actually need to add a little patch uh, you know for the uh, shortfall of the fabric but fortunately because this print is really busy and so you really can see and it turns out also the connecting seams are also completely hidden uh, by the belt here and so really is not a problem whatsoever so this is a good thing about using a, a fabrics with very busy print it really hides a lot of uh, sewing imperfections and so, uh, so here is a video uh, showing you where I fixed one side of the bodice and not the other side. And uh, can you tell uh, which side uh, is which? So the answer is I fixed the right 
bodice uh, for me so that is the left side on your screen and uh, and then so the one the side with the drag line is my left side or the right side of your screen and also I would like to share with you three sort of happy discoveries that I learned in terms of construction techniques uh, while working on this garment and number one is um, traditionally when I use the blind head foot of my sewing machine sometimes you can see like a little dot you know and then um, and uh, just minimum puckering and that does bother me a little bit so I wanted to try to see by reducing the tension of the upper thread whether that would help and it turns out it really did help incredibly and so I reduced it from the standard uh, setting at four for my banana machine to two and that works out great so that is number one and number two is um, when I was inserting the buttons I forgot to switch back the upper thread tension uh, from the blind hand and so then I sewed it and then unfortunately I need I do need to unpick the the buttonholes but then because the upper thread was quite loose so it ended up being much easier to unpick the buttonholes than before when it was really tight and I always had to be incredibly careful and I um, picked everything under a magnifying glass to make sure I didn't accidentally poke a hole in my garment but because upper thread was looser um, so it became quite easy but size uh, setting 2 was really too loose for my buttonhole so I changed it to setting 3 and it turns out great it gives me a really nice finish for the buttonhole uh, so not like two loose threads but it's still loose enough so if I need to unpick the buttonholes it, it makes it pretty easy um, so that is um, happy discovery number two and number three is uh, how I hand finish uh, blind you know hand sort of a invisible stitching for uh, a lot of the areas for example like the the cups here um, this is all uh, finished uh, by hand uh, because I prefer to have a very clean line outside without the top stitching and so all this portion is finished by hand and same thing with the uh, placket and also the arm uh, I'm sorry also the neckline and so traditionally I just you know like lay it flat on the table and then I uh, stitch it this way but then um, it just took a long time and also I had to be very careful with the tension of each single stitch because otherwise sometimes it does pucker a bit and by accident I was sewing it instead of flat um, I sew it just this way you know almost the same way that the uh, sewing machines uh, blind hem foot works by folding it over and they stitch it this way and number one I was able to go a lot faster this way so I really do think it reduced the amount of time easily by 50% which is a big improvement but more importantly is that I could actually adjust the thread tension uh, you know after a, every few inches not at the very end but you know every few inches so I didn't have to adjust the tension for every single stitch but you know I can just adjust it after and then so you can either tighten it up or loosen it up if it's too tight and for me that is a huge game changer because all of a sudden now I can go a lot faster and also can adjust the tension so now it's just perfectly smooth you know uh, and flat so I just really love it and then so that I would uh, share it with you so here is a video of this Valentine's Day dress and I paired the dress with a pair of three and a half inch heels in mahogany and I am just really happy how this dress uh, turned out um, I knew this dress would be girly and indeed it has turned out to be incredibly girly especially when paired with this uh, pink floral fabric and I am really happy how this uh, turned out and even though uh, this dress really took a lot of time because obviously in addition to many steps in the construction because of the various details I also need to adjust um, the pattern pieces etc but I think it's all time well spent and I really enjoyed the learning process uh, so overall uh, a success for this project Thank you so much for watching. 
and I hope you have enjoyed this video and have also found some of the tips that I shared uh, with you helpful in constructing uh, your garments. Please do stay safe and I hope I will see you soon. Bye-bye!